What we do here is go back, 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 back. Set. Welcome to the premiere episode of my new show, The Morgan Sports Beat. Here at The Beat, we go beyond the box score to find our stories. My name is Blair Young, and I'm the number one source on Morgan State Athletics. Our first story starts about the NCAA violations that were announced back in December. Morgan State was punished for allowing 84 ineligible athletes to play over a four-year period. I sat down with Athletic Director Edward Scott to ask him a few questions. To answer some of these questions, we sat down with Athletic Director Edward Scott to discuss the ramifications that came from the NCAA violations. He was very open about the entire process and has set the bar high for the future of this program. What we originally were given as a punishment, if you will, by the NCAA, uh, 10 of our teams were banned from the postseason um, for the immediate postseason coming up. Uh, in addition to that, we received a 1% uh, fine for those 10 teams of their operating budgets, um, which came out to be about a 60000 just over $60,000 fine. Uh, and in addition to that, we had a five-year uh, probationary period. Uh, in conjunction with Dr. Wilson, working with my deputy athletic director, Ms. Wagner, um, and the commissioner, uh, Dr. Thomas from the MEAC, we decided to appeal. And so in the appeal process, we had to go out to the NCAA headquarters and uh, present our case. Um, very proud to say that we did so. I think we did so very professionally and made a compelling case, um, which allowed the NCAA uh, to reconsider um, our penalties. And now uh, we have three teams um, that are facing a postseason ban. Uh, we reduced one year of probation, so we went from five to four. And the uh, financial penalty was decreased significantly. We're now at about $19,000 as opposed to sixty. Despite the penalties that Morgan faces, the NCAA awarded the athletic department a $890,000 grant in 2017. Here, Scott explains how it will improve the program. We were lucky enough and fortunate enough to be awarded $890,000 um, for that grant. Now, the basis of that grant is really all about academic support. And so what we did was uh, we put together a proposal that increased staff, um, it increased technology to make sure we had more laptops and those kind of things for our students to be able to utilize resource-wise. Um, in addition to that, we also had um, some space issues. Um, we're using some money next door to us where we're doing this interview right now. Uh, we were able to acquire some space from physical education, and so we're gonna double our square footage of academic support space here in Hill Field House. Okay. Um, Scott's energy and focus are the reason that his staff and student athletes have responded to his standards. He knew what it was in store for him before accepting the job. Now he has a clear vision, so let's see how he can execute it over the next few years. Coming up next, more from the Ed Scott interview. Welcome back to the Morgan Sports Beat. Now let's head back to the interview with Everett Scott about the NCAA violations. The new direction of the athletic department is well known among the athletes. Scott is doing his best to facilitate off the field success as much as on the field. He knows that the road to improvement starts in the classroom. The issues with the NCAA were mostly because of lack of accountability. The biggest difference now is open communication between the athletes and the support staff. Um, and then the other piece is being a leader, it's my job to communicate my expectations uh, to our student athletes and when they don't meet them, hold them accountable. And I've done that, and I think that's why you're hearing the student athletes talk about it, um, because they now know if they don't do what they're supposed to do academically, they cannot compete for Morgan State. Um, that is my non-negotiable. I, I will not waver on that. Uh, I am committed to that. It's a value that was instilled in me by my mother um, at a very young age, and so I'm going to hold strong to that. So our student athletes, if you ask them what the most important priority is, they'll tell you is academics um, to a person. And that also tells me that our messaging is consistent. Um, and at, in a large organization, we've increased our staff since I've been here by about five to seven people already. Um, so the larger we get, the more complex we get. It's important that we have very clear communication about what our vision and our goals are. And I think we've done that. We've also done it in a way, Blair, that doesn't, it doesn't make study hall punitive, right? It's not, you're not in study hall because you're bad. You're in study hall because a 2-7 is like a C and that's average. 
I don't believe in average. Study hall is now a major part of every athlete's life. It is no longer seen as a punishment, but rather a normal part of their schedule. The goal for a 3.0 across the program is not far from attaining. They were just at a 2.7 last year. Scott and his staff have worked hard to improve the academic standing, and the results can be shown. Uh, anytime you beat Coppin, it's a special night, right? <laughs> but to bring out 133 student athletes yes. who all earned a 3.0 or higher last semester, which is over 46% of our population, mm -hmm. um, I've always dreamed of the day of creating my own athletic director's honor roll. And, and I went home and told my wife that night to see it come to fruition. Um, that for me was really, really special. And most importantly, because our student athletes, not only did we feed them and we gave them nice quarter zips that said AD honor roll on it, to see their faces when they got a standing ovation in front of four plus thousand people, um, to me, there's nothing better than that as an athletic director. And then when you cap it off with two wins over your in-town rival, um, I slept pretty good that night. Yep. As the school moves on from these NCAA sanctions, one thing is for sure, Scott is committed to changing the culture here at Morgan. On-field success will always be second to academic performance. Well, this has been Blair Young with Morgan State Athletic Director Ed Scott. Thanks again. Man. My pleasure, Blair. Thank you. It is important to mention that all the NCAA violations occurred before Scott took the job here at Morgan. In a short amount of time, he's made a lot of changes to the athletic program. As spring starts to heat up, the football team has begun practicing. Our next story focuses on the incoming recruiting class that was announced earlier this year at a signing day event. As spring football practices begin, let's look back when the team held a signing day event to announce this year's recruiting class in front of alumni and fans. New coach Ernest T. Jones and athletic director Edward Scott welcomed those in attendance and introduced a new class of players. Moving forward right now, moving Morgan State University and this football program forward. It's a new day, and you should be excited about it. You should be excited to be a part yes, of the new day. I'd like to get us moving in the right direction. It's very important. Um, so I gave the coaching staff some, some marching orders, if you will, with this class. We had to do a better job taking care of home, right? We are Baltimore. Mm. I mean, we are the preeminent public urban institution in the state of Maryland. And that's important to me. We have to give back to the community, but we also have to keep our own at home. The focus on keeping players home was evident in this year's class. Baltimore County Player of the Year, quarterback Tyler Holly out of Perry Hall, and speedster Jordan Colefield from Newtown both chose Morgan over Crosstown rival Towson. The highlight of the class was Baltimore City Player of the Year, quarterback Jared Lewis from Dunbar. He's coming off leading his team to a state title this past season and was considered a great passer. Coach Jones and A.D. Scott understand the task that is ahead of them and are looking forward to building a new day. We have a strong history and tradition here at Morgan, but we've only had five winning seasons in the last 44 years. That's not acceptable, right? Our fans, our alumni, all of our constituents, and the community deserve better. I understand what's out in front of me. This staff understands what's out in front of us. We're going to make you guys proud. We're going to put a team out there that's going to be disciplined. We're going to put a team out there that's going to compete. We're going to put a team out there that's going to give us an opportunity to win a football game in the fourth quarter. You've heard me say it. But let me just tell you what I told you, because I think it's important for you to know. We brought 20 kids on campus, and all 20 of them said yes to Morgan State University. The theme of a new day is fitting for a team that is coming off a season with only one win. There's only one way to go for these Bears, and this class is a step in the right direction. Combination. I've told all of our coaches, right, we got to raise the academics. And what most people don't realize since I've been here, the academics of the incoming students have gone up. Yep. So we, um, uh, ACT, SAT, GPA has gone up of every single class. And so that's really, really important for me. We got to get through this NCAA stuff. The only way I know how to do it is get the right student athletes in here that want to do things the right way. So in regards to the one in 10, we told everybody it's a new day. We're not thinking about one in 10. We're not thinking about two years ago, three years ago, APR. We're not thinking about anything, but it's a new day. So that helped us get some of these kids. Here are some other recruits who are expected to make an impact on the upcoming season. Kicker Nicholas O'Shea, wide receiver Corey Holmes, a graduate transfer from Purdue, and running back Jalen Jackson, who chose Morgan over Mac schools like Bowling Green and Ohio. Let's hope some of these players will have immediate impact on the football team season next year. 
They open up the season at home versus Crosstown rival Towson next year. Our final story is a quick recap of how track, tennis, and softball teams have done so far this season. Spring is here, but Mother Nature must have missed the memo. Despite the weather, Morgan sports teams are in the middle of their spring season. Let's see how the teams have fared so far. The track team has gotten off to a good start this outdoor season. They have been going across the country for meets, including South Carolina and Florida. The women's 4x200 team placed second at the Weems Baskins Invitational. The men's team has had its share of podium visits as well. Lloyd Hilton recently won the long jump in Florida, and Vicari Elliott won the shot put at the Maryland Invitational. Both received MEAC Field Performer of the Week for their efforts. The men's tennis team has been on a roll lately, winning six in a row. They have been getting noticed from the conference with two Player of the Weeks and two Rookie of the Weeks. They have been dominating their competition, completing three shutouts already. Here's a look at their most recent matches. They shut out Hampton 4-0 and beat North Carolina Central 5-2. They currently sit in second place in their division behind Norfolk State. They have three more MEAC matches left and face Norfolk at the end of the season. The women's team has had an up and down spring so far. After starting the season 1-6, and six, they have won 4 out of their last 5. They have played their best tennis versus conference opponents. They won in North Carolina versus Central 5-2 and lost a close match against Hampton 4-2. They currently sit in 4th place but still have 4 conference games left to make up ground. The softball team has been playing well lately. They have won 4 of their last 5 games and have a record of 13-13. They could have a better record, but had six games canceled due to weather. They are led by pitcher Amy Begg, who is Morgan's career leader in shutouts, and on offense they are led by outfielder Domily Young and infielder Gabriela Gorosov, who was recently named MEAC Player of the Week. They are coming off a road sweep versus rival Howard, in which they scored at least eight runs in every game. They currently sit in third place in their division. They have four home series left on their schedule, and are only a few games back of first place. So come out and support the Lady Bears. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Morgan Sports Beat. Stay tuned for more, because here at The Beat, we're the heart of Morgan Athletics.